Hi dear students, welcome you all to the brilliant group of institution. Today we are here to discuss the most important class 12 CBSC MCQs for the chapter, your second chapter in grade 12 solutions. Alright, so let's begin from the first question. All are ready? Okay, so let's go to question number 1. Here we have the question, a simple question. First we are discussing mostly the NCRT exemplar based question. Then we will enter into the previous year or the expected type of questions. Okay, question number one. Which of the following unit is useful in relating the concentration of a solution with its vapor pressure? We studied a very simple equation uh, in our chapter that is Raoult's law. Right, Raoult's law states that partial pressure of a component A is equal to P naught A, right? The partial vapor pressure of the pure component into its mole fraction, its mole fraction. So here, which of the following unit, you know, mole fraction, parts per million, mass percentage, molality, molality, all are using to express the concentration of a solution. Is or no? So here, the uh, which concentration term is relating the concentration of a solution with its vapor pressure? So vapor pressure is related to which one? That's mole fraction, right? Mole fraction. So answer is option A. According to which law? Raoult's law, right? Raoult's law. Let's go to question number two. On dissolving sugar in water, okay, we have sugar. We are going to dissolve sugar in uh, water, all right? At a room temperature, solution feels cool to touch. Under which of the following cases, dissolution of sugar will be most rapid? In which of the cases, you can dissolve sugar very fast in water? What is that? Powdered sugar, sugar crystal. If you consider a sugar crystal, a sugar crystal and powdered sugar, which is better to dissolve, dear student, the powdered one. Why? The when you make a solid into a crystal into powder form, surface area increases. Surface area is a big factor of solubility. Surface area increases, solubility takes place or dissolution takes place so fast. Alright, so we can neglect the option sugar crystal. Okay, option B and C we can avoid it. Powdered sugar is the most soluble one. And in cold water or hot water? Definitely hot water, right? You know, hot water makes the kinetic energy of the particle greater, reactivity more as the temperature increases, the reaction or the reactivity rate increases. So, the best method is which one? Powdered sugar in hot water can make more dissolution of the sugar in water. Let's go to question number three. At the equilibrium, rate of dissolution of a solid solute in a volatile liquid solvent. What we are doing here is solid, we are going to dissolve, uh, solid is converted into, solid is converted into what? A liquid one, alright. Solid is converted to what? Liquid. At the equilibrium, the rate of dissolution of a solid solution in a volatile liquid. So this solid, the solid, uh, we are going to dissolve in liquid, it's going to form a liquid state. So what it is called? Uh, solid to liquid, that is called dissolution. Right, dissolution or it, it is soluble, it is, the solid is converting into liquid state. Correct. Then, at the equilibrium, you know, at the equilibrium, rate of forward reaction is equal to rate of backward reaction. So, what is the backward reaction is called? Forward reaction is called dissolution. Right, it is dissolving. So, so means solid is converted to liquid. So, what is the backward condition? Crystallization, right? Liquid come back to solid state is what it is called a crystallization. You know, at equilibrium, rate of forward reaction equal to rate of backward reaction. So, what is the answer? Equal to the rate of crystallization, right? At equilibrium, the rate of dissolution or conversion of a solid into liquid, liquid to solid, both are same in rate. Option 4 is the correct answer. Shall we go to the next question? Next one. We have a beaker, a beaker contain uh, a solution of a substance A. 
precipitation of substance A takes place. Okay, so we have a beaker which contain a substance A in a solution. Precipitation of A of substance takes a, substance A takes place when a small amount of A is added to the solution. Then what is the solution is known as? We know a normal solution, saturated solution, super saturated solution like that. So now it is uh, A is present in our solution. All right. We are going to add some more A into this compound. So this present A existing or it is converted into precipitate. Then what is the solution is known as? Dear student, it is called super saturated solution. When you add a little amount of the substance or solutes once again, a small quantity when you add it, if the entire substance is dissolving or like, like a precipitating, not dissolving, when it is precipitating, we can call them as, it is a super saturated solution, completely saturated above that, super saturated. All right, we know what is meant by saturated solution, no more solute can dissolve. No more solute can dissolve in a solution. That is called what saturated solution. If again you add to the saturated solution, if it is more, when you add some more solute, if it is immediately precipitated, which means the solution is super saturated. Okay, option one is the correct answer. Next you will see the maximum amount of a solid solute that can be dissolved in a specific amount of a liquid. What we are going to do here? We are going to dissolve a solid into liquid. Okay, a solid in liquid. Does not depend. This process, we are going to dissolve a solid in liquid. This process does not depend on which factor. Yes, student, directly we can go to the answer. Pressure. Is there is any effect of pressure on solid and liquid state? No. Pressure we are applicable only in gaseous state, right? Pressure, there is no important. Wow. How much, if you want to dissolve more amount of solid in this liquid, how, if you increase the pressure also, no effect. If you decrease the pressure also, no effect. Because solid and liquid won't change with the pressure. So which one does not depend upon this process being pressure. Alright, option third is the correct answer. Next you go see Low concentration of oxygen in the blood and tissue of people living at a high altitude is due to. We studied that. This is our ground level earth. If you are climbing a mountain, you know, at a high altitude, pressure is very less. Right? Pressure is very less. When you are coming down the path, like a uh, sea, you know, scuba divers, where pressure is very high, you know the reason. So, at a high altitude, pressure is lesser. According to Henry's law, according to Henry's law, pressure is directly proportional to its mole fraction. Right? Pressure is directly proportional to its mole fraction, which means, what is Henry's law? If you apply more pressure on the gas, on the solvent, you can dissolve more amount of gas in that solvent. For example, Pepsi bottle. If you consider Pepsi, more amount of carbon dioxide is dissolved in that liquid in water with high pressure. When you apply high pressure, more amount of gas you can dissolve in your blood or whatever the liquid. So the question, what, why low the, those people are living at a high altitude? Or if you are climbing a mountain, you will feel the lack of oxygen. Because at a high altitude, atmospheric pressure is lesser already. Pressure is lesser mean less amount of oxygen can dissolve in your blood. Or according to Henry's law, less oxygen only can dissolve in your blood. You know, it causes the problem anoxia, anoxia, absence of oxygen, anoxia. Right. So why are they experiencing less oxygen in their blood? Because low atmospheric pressure at a high altitude. At a high altitude, low pressure and the low altitude. It's uh, down the sea. What is that? It's having high pressure. All right. So answer is option three. Next question. Considering the formation, breaking, and strength of hydrogen bond, predict which of the following mixture will show positive deviation from Raoult's law. Here all we have already discussed in classes. Let me give you the entire uh, example for ideal solution and non-ideal solution okay so for about this table 
you can answer many of the question so let now in this slide i'm going to express or i'm going to give you the entire name of or the maximum possible uh, example for entire solution first of all ideal solution you know the properties everything you know ideal solution is the solution which obey Raoult's law for a wide range of concentration and temperature Raoult's law equations are applicable delta h mixing zero delta v mixing zero a b interaction approximately equal to a a and b b interaction and one more topic it will not form as zeotrop right ideal solution will not form as zeotrop okay what are the example okay ideal solution then what are the other one non ideal solution non ideal solution are of two type you know positive deviation positive deviation and we have negative deviation positive and negative deviation okay let's go to the end example ideal solution example you may study from the starting like this one normal hexane when mixing with the normal heptane normal hexane with the normal heptane bromoethane bromoethane with the chloroethane 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 then bromobenzene bromobenzene with the chlorobenzene right chlorobenzene Right, uh, like uh, ethyl chloride with ethyl chloride, uh, methyl, uh, ethyl bromide, same type like this. And another one you may study benzene with the toluene. Benzene with the toluene. You can see that the mixing components or combining components having almost a similar molecular mass, right? Normal heptane, normal heptane. Bromoethane, bromoethane. And uh, chlor bromobenzene, chlorobenzene. Benzene totally. There is no large difference in the molecular mass. These are the example ideal solution you have to remember. What about positive deviation? Positive deviations are given by lot of examples are there here. Positive deviation mainly given by the acetone compound like acetone. What is mean by acetone? Propanol. Acetone with the chloro. Uh, we can say ethanol. Acetone with ethanol. Acetone with the ethanol or they will give you propanol with the ethyl, al ethyl alcohol both are same okay e Acetone is what? Propanol Ethanol is what? Ethyl alcohol It also can give so the don't think that oh it's an another example or not. okay Acetone with ethanol Another one Acetone with the methanol Acetone with the methanol Then we have Acetone with the benzene Benzene and we have Acetone with the carbon disulfide, benzene with the methanol, benzene with the methanol, and uh, methanol with the water, methanol with the water, then ethanol with the water, ethanol with the water. One more example: chloroform with the carbon tetrachloride. Chloroform with the carbon tetrachloride. It's very compulsory to know the example. You can expect one of the sure question based on exam. Now let me give you some other example for the case of negative deviation. Negative deviation mainly given by chloroform. Chloroform only one example we discussed in positive deviation. What is that? Chloroform with the carbon tetrachloride. All others are belongs to negative deviation. Like CHCl3, uh, CL3, you know, chloroform. Chloroform with the acetone. Chloroform with the acetone. Chloroform with the benzene. Chloroform with the benzene. Chloroform with the diethyl ether. Diethyl ether. Another one. Phenol with the aniline. Phenol with the aniline. Another one. Water mixing with the any acid like HCl. Nitric acid, sulfuric acid, etc. Water with the HCl, water with the nitric acid, water with the sulfuric acid. All are belongs to negative deviation solution. So, dear all, please remember, please study. It's a very important to know the example. Okay, let's go. Question: Which of the following solution showing a positive deviation? Chloroform and acetone. All of you see chloroform and acetone we studied under negative deviation. 
nitric acid and water you see water with the nitric acid is negative deviation phenol with the aniline you see phenol with the aniline again negative deviation which is the only one positive deviation methanol with the acetone methanol with the acetone that is the positive one option 4 is the correct answer okay next question Colligative properties depends upon, we studied four colligative properties in the chapter, relative lowering of vapor pressure, depression in freezing point, elevation in boiling point, osmotic pressure. So, colligative property depends on what? No, only depends on the number of particle, number of solute particle in the system, not on the nature of the particle. What is that? Option C, right? Number of solute particle in the solution. As the number of solute particle increases, the colligative property can be. Which of the following aqua solution should have highest boiling point? Let me give you a small idea. This point you keep in mind. Okay, you can able to answer some of the questions regarding the same point. Keep, please keep in mind. If the number of particles increases, if the number of particles, if the number of particles in the solution increases, increases, we can say that three things, you can relate it to this point, you can say three things. If the number of particle increases in the solution, boiling point of the solution increases. Next two factor decreases. What are the next two factor? One is freezing point, one is vapor pressure. Okay, keep in mind. As the number of particle in the solution increases, boiling point increases, but freezing point and vapor pressure decreases. Okay, come to the point. Which of the following aqua solution should have highest boiling point? So highest boiling point mean which contain maximum number of particle. You know KNO3, potassium nitrate, you don't need to bother about the concentration because all concentrations are similar. KNO3 split it, you will get K plus and NO3 minus. Na2SO4 on dissociation you will get 2 Na plus and SO4 2 minus. Ammonium nitrate will give you ammonium plus and nitrate ion NO3 minus. Sodium hydroxide will give you Na plus and OH minus. Which species giving you maximum number of particle? Option B. Option B. Option B. Why? It's, it's giving you total 2 ions. K plus NO3. It's giving you 2 sodium, 1 SO4, total 3 ion. This is giving 2 ion, this is giving 2 ion. Maximum. Maximum number of particle mean their boiling point increases. Okay. So option B is the correct answer. You know, in this chapter, only the deleted portion is Van Hoff factor for CBSC board exam. But we can't neglect it completely. This kind of question, I factor is needed actually. Okay. Anyway, next question. What is the unit of ebullioscopic constant? You study ebullioscopic constant Kb, cryoscopic constant Kf like that. You know delta Tf, elevation in uh, delta Tb we can discuss because ebullioscopic constant there. No. Delta Tb, elevation in boiling point is equal to ebullioscopic into molality. Yes or no? So, what is Kb from the Kb is equal to delta Tb divided by M. What is the unit of delta Tb temperature? Temperature unit is Kelvin. What is the unit of molality? Molality unit is mole per kilogram. Yes or no? So, kilogram come to the numerator. So, we will get Kelvin kilogram mole when it is coming to the numerator it become mole to the power minus 1. Kelvin kilogram mole inverse or what we can say? Kelvin mole per kilogram is molality, no. So we can say Kelvin molality inverse. What is answer? Option A. Kelvin kilogram mole inverse or Kelvin molality whole inverse. That's also fine. Option uh, A is the correct answer. Even uh, cryoscopic constant Kf also the same thing, right? Same unit is there. Okay, Kelvin kilogram mole inverse. Next question. A unripe mango, okay. I'm taking a mango here, all right. A single uh, unripe raw, raw mango. It is placed in a concentrated salt solution, okay. They are putting in a sodium chloride solution, means it contains sodium chloride and water. And to prepare pickle, 
it will shrivel you know it will shrink why you know if you put a raw mango in a concentrated salt solution uh, you know nacl solution you can see that the mango can start shrivel what is the what is the reason you know mango which contain fully solvent mango pulp what is that it is fully solvent what is nacl solution it is it is a it is a completely a solution what is mean by osmosis movement of solvent from higher concentration of solvent to the lower concentration of solvent or we can say movement of solvent from from solvent to solution solvent to solution so from mango the solvent is coming to solution so mango shrivel right mango shrink right yeah what is this process is called osmosis right this is what called osmosis movement of solvent from a higher concentration of solvent to lower concentration of solvent through a semi permeable membrane is called which one osmosis so what is the answer why mango shrivel it loses water due to osmosis it loses water due to osmosis okay not reverse osmosis osmosis next one at a given temperature the osmotic pressure of a concentrated solution of a substance huh? they are matching with the dilute solution let me take same nacl solution here okay nacl with the water here i am taking a dilute solution dilute solution in the sense uh, less amount of nacl more amount of water okay when you cut when you comparing this dilute solution with the concentrated solution osmotic pressure how you can relate it you know dear osmotic pressure is equal to c into rt concentration into rt so osmotic pressure is directly proportional to concentration so concentration increases number of particle increases osmotic pressure gradually increases correct so we can say this osmotic pressure which osmotic pressure the osmotic pressure of the solution is very greater than a dilute solution correct a dilute solution so what we can say when you consider the osmotic pressure of a concentrated solution of a substance it will be higher than that of a dilute solution because concentrated solution contain many number of particle colligative property right osmotic pressure is a colligative property right it is directly proportional to concentration right concentration increases osmotic pressure greater option c is the correct answer next to skin which of the following statement is false option a according to raoul's law vapor pressure exerted by a volatile component of a solution is directly proportional to its mole fraction in the solution is yes or no we study p a is directly proportional to mole fraction of a correct one question is which is false b decreasing order of the osmotic pressure of 0.01 molar aqueous solution of barium chloride what is barium chloride pacl2 potassium chloride what is potassium chloride kcl uh, acetic acid what is acetic acid ch3cooh and sucrose what is sucrose c12 h22 o11 is in the order you know concentration is similar they given 0.01 molar what is the difference here on only the species are different you know osmotic pressure is a colligative property it depends on number of particles as the number of particle increases colligative property definitely increase right you know barium chloride when dissociate it will give you ba2 plus and 2 cl minus total it will giving you 3 ion potassium chloride will dissociate it will give you k plus and cl minus ion 2 ion acetic acid dissociate you will get ch3 plus and co sorry ch sorry sorry h plus right so acid one CH3COOH dissociation it will give you CH3COO minus and H plus two ion and uh, sucrose you know it is a non electrolyte it won't dissociate right? sugar form now here all year uh, barium chloride KCl acetic acid when you consider barium chloride should have highest osmotic pressure because it giving you three ion correct one. after that acetic acid or potassium chloride you know acetic acid is a weak acid which mean it will dissociate slow 
but NaCl, KCl are very strong electrolyte. It will dissociate fast. So KCl will give you a two ion faster. So it's very good. Then acetic acid, then sucrose. Yes, it is a correct order. Option third one. Two different solutions of sucrose of the same molarity prepared in different solvents will have the same depression in freezing point delta T. Is possible? No. This is your correct answer. Third one. Okay. The osmotic pressure of a solution is given by pi equal to CRT. Correct. Let me explain the third point. Dear all, they are saying that two different solutions. Okay. They are taking two different solutions of same molality. Molality is similar. Concentration is similar. Uh, of which solution? Sucrose. Okay. Sucrose solution. Sucrose solution. But they said in different solvent. Solvents are different. Yes or no? So let me take it here solvent A, here let me take it solvent B. What is the difference? What is the question they are saying that they have these solutions having same depression in freezing point. What is depression in freezing point? Delta Tf. Delta Tf is equal to Kf into M. Here molality we cannot consider because molality both are same for each solution. What do you see dear student? Kf. What is Kf? What is Kf? The cryoscopy constant or molar depression constant. What is? It's for a solvent, right? Kf and Kb we are uh, saying for a solvent. A solvent. They said we are using different solvent. Different solvents having different Kf value. So delta Tf can be changes. So there is no condition. It should be similar. Okay. We will have same depression. No. It having different. Option 3 is the correct answer. Shall we go to the next one? Value of Henry's law constant KH. We know we studied PA is equal to KH into XA for a gas. According to uh, which one? Henry's law. Values of Henry's law constant, how it is related with the temperature. Dear all, as per the equation, I can say Henry's constant is directly proportional to pressure. Correct. What is the relation between pressure and temperature? You know, according to the states of matter, 11th grade chapter, you studied Boyle's law, Charles' law, Avogadro's law, etc. So you studied pressure is directly proportional to what temperature. So pressure directly proportional to temperature means we can say KH is also directly proportional to temperature. So what is the answer? KH value increases with increase in temperature. Option A is the correct answer. Clear? Next one. Values of Henry constant KH is, we studied a very important property, if KH value increases, the solubility of the gas in the solvent decreases, right? Solubility of the gas decreases. KH value increases, the solubility decreases. Okay, so what is our value we can say? The value of Henry's constant KH is Greater for gases with a lower solubility. Yes, those gases having lower solubility, KH value will be greater. One. Okay, it's a very important point, all of you. Please keep in mind. Next one. Consider the figure. You can see two tanks are given here. First tank which contains fresh water, fully solvent. This one contains sodium chloride solution. So this is, I can write it as, this is a pure solvent. Tank number 1 is fully solvent, tank number 2 which contains solution, pistons are there, piston A, piston B, okay. Question number 1, I think they are asking which is the correct option. Water will move from the side A to side B if a pressure lower than the osmotic pressure applied on piston B. How it is possible? No. If you apply a pressure on B side, if it is lesser than the osmotic pressure, if it is lesser than the osmotic pressure, uh, how you can say that water will move from A to B? If a pressure lower than the osmotic pressure, you are applying pressure on solution side here. You are applying solu uh, solution side, right side, you are applying pressure. Then how the solvent can move from uh, left to right? Because pressure is higher on uh, right side, right? Water cannot go. Option B. Water will move from B to A 
if a pressure equal to osmotic pressure applied on piston B. Yes, right? Osmotic pressure, is, what is osmotic pressure? The minimum pressure, it is used to stop the process of osmosis. So if you apply a pressure which is equal to osmotic pressure, there is no movement takes place, right? B is wrong. C, water will move from A to B if pressure equal to osmotic pressure. No, equal to osmotic pressure, osmotic pressure only. Osmotic pressure means there is no uh, further uh, osmosis taking place. Osmotic pressure means what? The pressure applied on the solution side in order to prevent the osmosis. So during, if you are applying a pressure equal to osmotic pressure, no osmosis takes place. Okay, water will move from side B to A if a pressure greater than the osmotic, that is the point. Greater than the osmotic pressure applied on B. If you apply a pressure on the piston side B, if you apply more pressure than osmotic pressure, then the solvent starts to move from B to A. That is correct. That is correct. Yes, 4 is the correct answer. Next one. On the basis of information given below, mark the correct option. Mark the correct option. Option A. In bromoethane and chloroethane, we studied bromoethane and chloroethane as an example of ideal solution. Okay, this is a ideal solution. Okay, intermolecular forces A A B B type are nearly the same as A B type. Yes or no? Yeah, in ideal solution, solvent solute interaction is approximately equal to solvent solvent solute solute interaction. Yes, it is a correct statement. B. In ethanol and acetone, here all ethanol and acetone are given under positive deviation. Okay, positive deviation. But they are saying AA and BB type intermolecular interactions are stronger than AB type interaction. We studied in positive deviation, AB interaction is weaker than AA and BB interaction. Yes or no? In positive deviation, acetone and ethanol, in positive deviation, we studied AB interaction is less than AA and BB. So, is it possible? AA, BB type intermolecular interactions are stronger than, yeah, it is stronger, right? AA and BB are stronger than AB interaction. Yes, it's a correct one. Now, uh, option C, in chloroform and acetone, Chloroform and acetone, I think I given, we discussed in negative deviation. Chloroform and acetone, we discussed under negative deviation. What we studied in negative deviation? AB interaction is stronger than AA and BB interaction. What they are saying? AA, BB type intermolecular interactions are weaker than, yeah, AA and BB interactions are weaker than AB interaction. That's also statement wise, it is correct. Let me go to the option. Solution B will show negative deviation. Is it? No, it's showing positive deviation. So that is not the correct answer. Solution B and C will follow Raoult's law. No, B and C are positive and negative deviation. They are non ideal solution. They won't obey Raoult's law. Option C. Solution C will show a positive deviation. No, we discuss solution C forming negative deviation. Solution A will follow Raoult's law. Yes, because it obey, uh, it is the ideal solution, right? Raoult's law. Option 4 is the correct answer. Next one. Two beakers capacity 500 ml. You can see two beakers A and B with a 500 ml total capacity. One of these beaker level is A was filled with a 400 ml water. So it contain four, it contain 400 ml of water. Whereas the beaker B level with the 400 ml 2 molar NaCl, it contains 400 ml uh, water and the NaCl solution 2 molar. Okay. At the same temperature, both the beaker were placed in closed container of the same material and same capacity as in figure. At a given temperature, which of the following statement is correct about the vapor pressure of pure water and then of NaCl solution? Dear student, you know. In first beaker, fully water, solvent. In second beaker, solution. As I told you, number of particle increases. 
if the number of particles increases do you remember the three terms which we discussed boiling point increases freezing point and vapor pressure decreases what we need here vapor pressure so which solution contain maximum number of particle of the b beaker yes or no because uh, a is beaker which contain fully solvent b beaker which contain solution nacl particle is there so number of particle is greater in the beaker b so it is having lower vapor pressure fully water present in the uh, convert the which one the tank a which having more vapor pressure so what is answer the vapor pressure in container a is more than that of container b yes or no so keep in mind this point you can able to answer so many questions okay number of particle increases in the solution number of solute particle increases in the solution vapor pressure decreases okay option a can be the correct one. next all of you on the basis of information given below mark the correct option let me go to what is the information given on adding acetone to methanol acetone to methanol we study under positive deviation some of the hydrogen bond between methanol and molecules break okay let's see at a specific composition methanol acetone mixture form maximum boiling azeotrope we studied maximum and minimum boiling azeotrope positive deviation we studied that it will form which one dear student minimum right it will form minimum boiling azeotrope it will form minimum boiling azeotrope positive deviation can form minimum boiling azeotrope negative deviation will form maximum boiling azeotrope so they say it is forming maximum boil no at this specific composition methanol acetone will form maximum boiling azeotrope will show negative deviation no that's not maximum boiling it's minimum boiling and at a specific composition methanol acetone mixture will form yeah minimum boiling azeotrope and will show a positive deviation yes everything is matching option c is correct why they show forming a minimum boiling azeotrope why their uh, mixture having low boiling point here we studied that in a positive deviation a b interaction is weaker than a a and b b which is the system after mixing a b this is a weaker bond right weaker the bond in the mixture you can easily break it bond break the bond its boiling point will reduce us so it's having minimum boiling point okay so very careful see the question see the question this question is related to the example we should know the example belongs to which deviation okay careful next one kh value for different gases are given here arrange these gases in the order of their solubility we know that what is the relation between kh value and solubility is kh value increases we studied that solubility of the gas decreases that's all now so let's go here what are the gases given here argon after that carbon dioxide after that methanol formaldehyde after that methane all right what is the value given argon value 14.39 after that 1.67 after that 1.83 to 10 to the power minus 5 after that 0.413 okay let's go dear student question which is the increasing solubility okay or increasing solubility mean decreasing value of kh which one having very less value for kh you can see now minus value minus 5 so that's a hcho having least kh value means more solubility after that which is the least value 0.413 which is that methane after that 1.67 carbon dioxide and greatest value is for argon so what is the answer can you observe argon carbon dioxide argon carbon dioxide methane hcho options okay so this is the only point kh value increases solubility decreases next one intermolecular forces between two Benzene molecule are nearly as same strength of the between toluene. This red benzene and toluene. Benzene and toluene we discussed in which example ideal solution. Correct. Benzene and uh, uh, toluene is an example of ideal solution. Ideal solution we studied that 
A B interaction approximately equal to A A and B B interaction. Yes, that they are saying between benzene A A molecule are nearly same as strength of between toluene B B interaction. For a mixture of benzene and toluene, which of the following is not true? Very careful while answering the question whether they are asking the correct statement or incorrect statement. Which is not true. Let's go. Delta H mixing zero. Yeah, enthalpy of mixing zero during a ideal solution formation. That's a correct one. And boiling mixing also zero. This will form minimum boiling azeotrope. No dear, no dear, no. Ideal solution will not form azeotropes. Okay, what is azeotrope? They are binary mixture having same composition without change in its. Uh, same having the same constant boiling point will be there without change in its overall composition. This will not form ideal solution. No, it is an ideal solution. So uh, this will not form ideal solution. This will form minimum boiling azeotrope. That's a wrong one. This will not form ideal solution. This will not form ideal solution. Benzene and toluene. That's also uh, that is an ideal solution, right? But they say that this will not form ideal solution. That is also one of that. That's also the can be the answer. Okay, anyone we see already. Next one. Molality of the dilute solution is doubled. Okay. Molality of a solution doubled, or you can say concentration doubled almost. The value of molar depression constant, you know, KF, cryoscopic constant, will be. What is the point here all? We know delta TF depression in freezing point is equal to KF into molality. They are saying that molality of the solution double, what happens to the value of KF? KF can be changes? No. What is KF? If the cryoscopic constant or molar depression constant, it is for a solvent. It is for a solvent or for a water KF value this much. For benzene, KF value this much. Solvent is not changing. No. Concentration of KF change it. Solvent for a particular solvent, KF and KB value are fixed one. They are not changes. Okay. So we can say unchanged. Okay. KF value won't change here. Temperature dependent term among the following is, you know very well, which concentration term related to temperature? What is that? Molarity. Because molarity is equal to WB by MB into 1000 divided by volume. You know, volume is depend on temperature. So, temperature changes mean volume changes, then mass, or then sorry, the molarity changes. But in molarity, mole fraction, weight percentage, all are weight target, all are weight terms. You know, temperature and weight, that's not that much relation. So, volume is the changing one. So, molarity changes with the change in temperature. Next one. Which one of the following is incorrect for an ideal solution? Which of the following is incorrect for an ideal solution? Delta H mixing 0, Delta U mixing internal energy 0 and the Delta P. Delta P means change in pressure you can calculate through observed pressure divided by the Raoult's law through calculated pressure 0, Delta G mixing equal to 0. Dear student, Delta G mixing equal to 0, that is wrong. You are mixing two solution, right? Ideal solution or non-ideal solution, whatever, you are going to mix A and B two liquids together and you are making a mixture of A, B. What is mean by Delta G? You know, Gibbs energy. Gibbs energy 0 means the reaction, what? The reaction is not taking place like that. Delta G should be negative, then only the reaction will be spontaneous or it can be feasible or it can occur, right? So for a mixing, if you are mixing two solution mean Delta G value are negative, okay? Negative or we can say Delta G value less than zero. This is the correct for when you dissolve or when you are mixing two liquid. When you are mixing two liquid, you will get a new solution. Yes or no? A, B solution, which means the reaction is feasible, it can occur. Feasibility means you can say only through delta G, delta G should be less than zero or negative, then only reaction can take place. Okay, let's go to the next one. Which one is not equal to zero for an ideal solution? Delta H mixing, you know, zero. 
we discussed in delta h mixing you know it equal to zero delta v mixing zero change in pressure also zero but delta s mixing what is delta s entropy of mixing entropy you know what is entropy you studied in 11th grade total degree of randomness more the randomness more disorder the system more positive is the entropy so dear all you just imagine you have a solution a you have a solution b you are mixing together you are going to make a solution of a b okay suppose a containing three particle b containing two particle so a b contain total five particle where you can observe more degree of randomness in a b solution as the number of particle increases the randomness increases randomness increases mean entropy greater than zero or positive okay so mixing of solution keep in mind during the mixing of solution we can say when you making a solution ideal solution whatever if you are mixing two solution and making a new solution you can say that delta h mixing zero delta v mixing zero delta p mixing zero delta u mixing internal energy zero delta g should be less than zero negative delta s should be greater than zero positive these are the conditions normally we are using for a, a mixing of two solution by making a new solution okay so which is not equal to zero mean delta s mixing that is should be greater than zero it should be a positive value next of the following 0.1 molar aqua solution which one will exhibit the largest freezing point depression largest freezing point depression we you know freezing point is decreasing that is called depression in freezing point right you know we discussed that once again i am repeating number of particle increases in a solution we can say boiling point increases vapor pressure and freezing point decreases what is the factor we needed here freezing point is yes all larger the number of particle in the solution it having lowest freezing point the question which exhibiting which will exhibit largest depression in freezing point where you can observe very low pressure very low freezing point you know kcl on dissociation will give you k plus and cl minus total it's giving you two i what is c6h2lo6 glucose you know glucose is a monosaccharide it won't undergo further dissociation it is just exists as one species it is a non electrolyte a to so4 thrice on dissociation it will give you two al3 plus and three so4 two minus total how many ions are producing five ion two al and three so4 K to SO4 will give you two K plus and SO4 two minus total is giving you three I. So which is giving maximum number of particle? This one. So it will it having very low uh, which one freezing point. Okay. So which will show very large uh, depression in freezing point. Which one having greatest number of particle? Lower freezing point. Option C. P A and P B are the vapor pressure of the pure liquid component. Normally, pure liquid component we are using a term P naught. Is or no? P naught A and P naught B. This is the normal term we are using to express the vapor pressure of the, the partial pressure of the pure component. Okay, here they mention P A and P B. Okay, fine. Of the component A and B, if X Normally not a x right. It's actually chi. Anyway, mole fraction. Okay, x represent the mole fraction of a. The total pressure of the solution will be. We know that we derived a small derivation uh, during the solution chapter. We know Raoult's law. P a is equal to P not a into x a. P b is equal to P not b into x b. Is all. Not actually x a and x b. Chi a and chi b. Anyway. Then what is total pressure, dear all? Then total pressure will be P A plus P B. So P P A means what here? P not A into X A. What is P B? P not B into X B. You know the mole fraction of a total system is equal to one. 
Therefore, xa plus xb is equal to 1. If you are taking xa common, then 1 minus xb. If you substitute this xa value in this equation, you will get one answer. Similarly, from this you can take xb equal to 1 minus xa, that also you will get one answer. So, you, you may study two equations to calculate p total. That is a question. What is the equation to calculate the p total? You can calculate in two ways. First, I am writing in terms of a. p naught a plus xb into p naught b minus p naught a. One equation. Another one, you just interchange the a, b letters or the components. Then you will get the other equation. Here, p naught b plus xa into p naught a minus p naught b. These are the two equations to calculate the total pressure of a solution. So, the question, instead of p naught a and p naught b, here they consider p a and p b. That's it. So, can you tell me the answer? p naught a into this letter should be same, okay. That's a, some data are there. You see, P naught A here taking means mole fraction should be B. This B, B. If you are taking here, you see A, A. It should be similar. So, this is not wrong. This is not a correct one. Sorry, not a correct one. P naught B, X, A, C. A, B, not correct. Here, okay. P, A plus P, A and X, A. No. If you are taking P, A, then the mole fraction should be X, B. So, this is not wrong. Option 4 is correct. PB plus XA into P naught A minus P naught B. Yeah, this is correct like this one. Okay, so total pressure equation is important, can be expect numerical also. Next question. A solution of acetone and ethanol. Acetone in ethanol. Acetone with the ethanol, acetone with the methanol, all we discussed in positive deviation. It shows a positive deviation from Robert's law. See, the examples are important. Next. 3 moles of P and 2 moles of Q. Number of moles of P given 3. Number of moles of Q given 2. Is mixed. What will be their total vapor pressure in the solution of their partial vapor pressure are given? Their individual partial pressure is given. For partial pressure of uh, P is given. How much? 80 torr. And uh, partial pressure of Q is given 60 tone. All right. Okay. 60 tone and uh, 80 tone. What is the question here all? Question to calculate what will be their total vapor pressure. What is the equation to calculate total vapor pressure? P total is equal to P naught A into XA plus P naught B into XB. Or you can use the previous equation like any of these two p total that's also fine either you can use this p total this p total or you can use this p total anything let me use this equation p total equal to the first component plus second component what is p naught a here let me take it uh, a component as p okay this a component as p b component as q number of moles of p a number of moles of q as b what is P naught A? Its vapor pressure is given A T into. How to calculate mole fraction of A component? Number of moles of A by total number of moles. What is the number of moles of A? 3. What is the total number of moles of uh, the solute component? 3 plus 2, 5. 3 by 5 plus. What is the partial vapor pressure of the B component? 60. What is the vapor uh, mole fraction of the B component? B component mole fraction divided by total mole fraction all right so it will be 5 8 times 1 time and uh, uh, remaining 3 30 so 16 into 3 16 into 3 how much 48 plus and here 5 in out of 60 that is 12 time 12 into uh, that is uh, 24 that's equal to 40 60 72 uh, right 72 tom is the final pressure right option c is the correct answer we can use any of the equation which i mentioned in the previous slide next one match the column one with the column two and mark the appropriate order delta h mixing zero delta b mixing zero what is that it is an ideal solution delta h mixing not equal to zero delta b mixing not equal to zero it is a non ideal solution Delta H mixing less than, Delta B mixing less than, negative deviation. 
Delta H mixing greater, delta B mixing greater, positive deviation. Which is the answer correct in here? A with the third one, B with the first one. A third, B first. Option B. Right? Simple one. Now, filling the blanks with the appropriate words. Azeotropic mixture, you know, azeotropic mixture means it is a binary mixture. Two components are there. It having the same constant boiling point without change in the composition. So, azeotropic mixture boil without changing their composition. Composition. Hope you get the answer. Here they given color, property, boiling point, composition. Option D. Azeotropic mixture existing in solution showing, you know, positive deviation and negative deviation. Dash solution do not form azeotrope. You know, ideal solution will not form azeotrope. And Van Hoff factor for a no for an electrolyte is uh, electrolyte. Okay, you know, normal electrolyte. Van Hoff factor not a part anyway. You know, Van Hoff factor for an electrolyte for non-electrolyte it is equal to one. For a normal electrolyte it is greater than one. For example, NaCl it will give you two ion greater than one. Right, so greater. Okay, all together your answer is option D. Two liquids, nitric acid and water. Where we study nitric acid and water, nitric acid and water. Water combining with the hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, nitric acid, all are belongs to negative deviation. Negative deviation. In negative deviation, we know AB interaction is stronger than AA and BB interaction. Let's go. It will form a maximum boiling azeotrope. Yeah, negative deviation will form maximum boiling azeotrope. It means AB interaction are stronger than AA and BB interaction. Correct or not? Yes. Yes, today. Why? Why negative deviation forming? Why negative deviation solution forming maximum maximum boiling azeotrope? Huh? Why they are forming maximum boiling point? No. When A component and B component you mix it, what is the solution you are getting? A, B component. You know, A, B interaction is already stronger bond, right? It is a very stronger bond. So, stronger the bond, it will take a lot time to boil, right? So, that's why A, B interaction is very stronger. So, they are showing very maximum boiling as you know. They make sure having very high boiling point. So, option A is the correct one. In a graph, you may study two graphical major representation in the colligative property. So we remember this graph, right? Yeah. What is this graph represent P, Q, X, Y? This is a graph, temperature and vapor pressure, you are drawing that, you are getting two curves, you know, the upper line, P, Q. P, Q represent which one? Solvent. Pure solvent. And X, Y represent solution. Which graph is this? This difference is called what? Delta Pb, elevation in boiling point. You know, solution having greater boiling point than solvent. Why? Because solution contain number of particle. Number of particle increases, boiling point increases. So the right side curve, xy having solution, the below having the pq, left side which will having solvent. So you know, this is, this is the, this is the boiling point of solution Pb. This is the boiling point of solvent Pb naught. Their difference is called what? Pb minus Pb naught. That is called elevation in boiling point. So what is Pq? Pq curve represents solvent. Xy is the curve for solution. Delta T is the depression in freezing point. No, 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 no. No depression in freezing point. Okay. Pq is the, what is the answer? Pq is the curve for solvent. Xy is the curve for solution. Delta T is the elevation in boiling point. Yes. Option D is the correct one. Okay. Option D is the correct one. See the graph carefully. A solution containing a solution containing 12.5 gram of a non-electrolyte. So weight of solute is given 12.5 gram. In 185 gram water. So weight of solvent is given 185 gram. It shows a boiling point elevation or elevation in boiling point delta Tb is equal to 0.80 Kelvin. 
calculate the molar mass of the solute mb mb we need to find out they given the kb value ebullioscopic constant value given uh, sorry kb kb value given here 0.52 kelvin kilogram mole inverse okay let's go what is the equation to calculate delta tb delta tb is equal to kb into molality what is molality delta tb is equal to kb into W B by M B into thousand divided by W A. What is delta T B given? Zero point eight zero Kelvin. What is K B value given? Zero point five two. W B twelve point five. And M B M B we don't know. We have to calculate thousand divided by weight of solvent. Right? Weight of solvent is already given in kilogram. Means you don't need to multiply by thousand. Weight of solvent is given in gram means you have to multiply by thousand, so one eighty five. We have to calculate MB value. So MB is equal to zero point eight zero into one eighty five, right? Uh, sorry, MB need to calculate, right? MB need to calculate. So MB we can take it left. MB is equal to zero point five two into twelve point five into thousand divided by 0.80 into 185, right? 0.52, 12.5 into 1000. Uh, 52, 12.5 into 1000. Right? So 15185. Almost 50 nearby 50 nearby 50 less than 50. It should be less than 50 at any cost. Less than 50 and nearby 50. Less than 50, nearby 50. That's uh, option D can be. Option D can be 43.92 gram per mole. Okay, option D can be the answer. So, if the colligative property related numerical can be expected. Okay, study the example and the equation. In the graph, this is an another graph you may study. This is a graphical representation for depression in freezing point. First one we discussed elevation in boiling point. This is depression in freezing point. There are three curves. PQ. Can you see PQ? What is PQ? That is our liquid solvent. Liquid solvent. What is the below? Uh, ST. ST. That is liquid solution. What? Liquid solution. Then what is the curve of QR? You are freezing dear student. This is freezing. You know you are lowering the temperature. So liquid solvent finally converted to what? Solid solvent. Liquid solvent converted to finally solid solvent. These are the terms represent. And you know that this is the, this line. This line represent uh, the freezing point of the solvent. It is represented by TF0. This is the curve representing or this is the point representing the freezing point of the solution. Tf, the difference between is called delta Tf, right? Delta Tf, uh, depression in freezing point. So, what is the curve? PQ represent liquid state of solution. No, PQ represent liquid state of solvent. PQ, PQ is the liquid state of solvent. QR is the solid state of solvent. ST is the liquid state of liquid state of solution. All. Right. Correct, right? And uh, solvent, solid state of pollution, no. Uh, solid state of solvent, liquid state of solvent, solid state of friction, no. Option B is the correct one. Next one. 2 gram of sugar is added to 1 liter of water to give sugar solution. Okay? We have 2 gram of sugar where we are dissolving in 1 liter of water. Alright. Question. What is the effect of addition of sugar on the boiling point and freezing point? We already discussed before as the number of particles as the number of particles increases what we can say boiling point increases freezing point decreases. So when you add 2 gram sugar sugar is solute right particle number increases right. So when you add sugar into water boiling point increases freezing point decreases. Boiling point increases, freezing point decreases. Option C is the correct answer. Next, sprinkling of salt help in clearing the snow covered roads in hill. 
the phenomenon involved in the process you can see in polar region the roads are fully covered by snow so there the snow you can melt it the snow the existing snow you can melt it and you can uh, the, the track we can use it for the transportation that is because by adding NaCl we will pour NaCl crystal because NaCl is a solute the snow which contains solvent so when you add a solute into solvent what is happening the freezing point decreasing we studied no number of particle increases mean freezing point decreases it starts to help so what is the point the sprinkling of uh, salt helps in the clearing of uh, road salt uh, which is filled by snow that is because of depression in freezing point depression in freezing point okay depression in freezing point next 5% solution of cane sugar has freezing point to 71. What will be the freezing point of 5% glucose solution? We, are, we want to compare the freezing point of two solutions. Okay. What is the first solution? We have 5% cane sugar. 5% cane sugar. What is the next solution? It is again 5% glucose solution. Okay. Glucose solution. What is the data further they given? You know what is the meaning of 5 percentage cane sugar? 5 gram cane sugar, 5 gram cane sugar in 95 gram water. Okay. So no, 5 gram. Then did you specify which is the uh, correct solution or solvent? We can take. Ah, okay. In water they specify. Fine. So 5 percentage mean 5 gram in remaining 95 gram water. Similarly, 5 percentage glucose mean. 5 gram glucose glucose in 95 gram water okay so any other data given 5 percentage cane sugar solution it's a molar mass okay so what is a uh, weight of cane sugar solute wb is given 5 gram what is the weight of solvent wa is given 95 gram okay and they given the molecular mass of sucrose so molecular mass of solute is given 342 gram per mole all right next question it is having a freezing point kelvin solution right it's having a delta tf not delta tf tf right solution freezing point tf is given what is the tf given uh, 271 kelvin all right solution the sucrose solution uh, freezing point also given 271 kg. Okay. Now, any, what is the other data given in the opposite side? Here, weight of solute is given 5 gram. Weight of solvent is given 95 gram. And uh, molecular mass of the solute MB is given, you know, glucose mass is 180 gram per mole. In water, what is the freezing point of pure water is? Freezing point of pure water, you know, TF0, right? TF0, that is common in both sides. TF0 equal to what? 273.15, right? Right, freezing point is what? 0 degree, that is equal to 273.15 K. Okay, next one. Uh, what's the question actually? What will be the freezing point of this solution? What is the freezing point of this solution? Tf of this solution we want to calculate. What is the equation to calculate delta Tf? We have delta Tf is equal to Kf into Wb by Mb into 1000 divided by Wa. Let us substitute. What is delta Tf? Delta Tf, let me rewrite it as Tf0 minus Tf. Yes or no? Delta Tf is what? Tf0 minus Tf. Freezing point of solvent minus solution. What is Tf0? 273.15 minus. What is Tf? 271. Equal to Kf value. No need to write here student. It will be cancelled because solvent is similar. Water, water. While taking the ratio, it will cancel. Okay. Wb. What is weight of solute? 5. Mb, what is the weight of uh, molecular mass 342 into 1000 divided by what is the weight of solvent 95 gram. Yeah. You know 273.15 minus two, uh, 273 that's equal to 2.15. Okay, then what about here? Here we have 
delta Tf is equal to what is Kf? Let me keep it like that. Wb5 Mb Mb 180 into 1000 divided by weight of solvent is 95 gram. Let me take it. This is equation number one. This is equation number two. Take the ratio. So I can write if I am taking 1 by 2, we will get 2.15 divided by delta Tf is equal to Kf into 5 divided by 342 into 1000 divided by 95 divided by Kf into 5 divided by 180 into 1000 divided by 95. Right? Okay, very simple to calculate. All of the most of the terms are going to cancel here, so we can write it uh, here like you know thousand by ninety five, thousand by ninety five will be cancelled. Kf Kf cancel only five by three forty two and a one eighty by five will come. Five will five five will cancel. One eighty divided by three forty two. So delta Tf. Question is not to calculate delta Tf. Question is to calculate uh, Tf Tf the freezing point of the solution. So all of you, you can calculate delta Tf first of all. After calculating delta Tf, how you can get Tf? Delta Tf is equal to what? Tf naught minus Tf. So delta Tf from this equation, you will get a value. Let me take it as x. You can calculate, right? x. And what is Tf naught? The freezing point of the pure solvent. What is the value? 273.15 for water minus Tf. So Tf is equal to this plus this one. Or uh, Tf, okay, Tf we can take it. So Tf when you are taking here, it will come 273.15 minus x. Okay, so that's the value you are getting. Almost you can check it here all. Uh, nearly 1270 you will get it. That is 269.07 Kelvin will be the answer. You can check it. So the method is clear now. So first one solution, other solution, take the ratio, calculate. Okay, easy method. Let little, little, little time, but it's no issue. The almost all terms are cancelling here. Kf, Kf, 1000 by 95, 5, 5 all are cancelling. 180 by 342, that is, you know, two, uh, divided by 2.15. Delta Df, oh, that's it. So delta Df you will get finally 269.07 Kelvin option. B is the correct answer. Okay, next one. 5% solution of cane sugar. You have 5% solution of cane sugar, you know, sucrose. It is isotonic. It is isotonic. What is isotonic? They have the same osmotic pressure. With the 1% solution of X. What is the molecular weight of X? Here, you know, osmotic pressure pi is equal to CRT or pi equal to what is concentration number of moles by volume into rt correct pi equal to n by v into rt all right this student osmotic they said already these two solutions are isotonic means their osmotic pressures are similar which mean you know r is a constant the temperature the isotonic once the temperature system you can take it as a constant temperature even the volume also not changes only the factor changes number of moles because the particles are different, solutes are different. Yeah. For an isotonic solution, if you want to calculate their uh, molecular mass, you can equate their number of moles because only the variable thing is for a different solution or is solute is number of moles. So I can say number of moles of cane sugar is equal to number of moles of the component X. For an isotonic solution, you can equate their number of moles. Number of moles of cane sugar. How to calculate number of moles? Given mass by molar mass. Here also given mass by molar mass. Here given mass of which one? Cane sugar. Molar mass of which one? Cane sugar. This is weight of X. Molecular mass of X. What is the weight of cane sugar dear student? 5 percentage mean what? 5 gram cane sugar in 95 gram water. So weight of cane sugar 5. What is the molecular mass of cane sugar given? 342 equal to. Weight of X of 1 percentage. What is 1 percentage? 1 gram X in 99 gram water. 
so 1 divided by molecular mass of x so what is the molecular mass of x dear all that's equal to 342 divided by 5 342 divided by right 6 something right 60 something so what's the answer it can be option b 68.4 one another question same type 10 percentage solution of urea 10 percentage solution of urea is isotonic with the 6 percentage solution of a non volatile substance x what is the molecular weight of x same thing <coughs> if they are isotonic mean you can equate their number of moles so number of moles of urea equal to number of moles of x what is number of moles given mass by molar mass here also given mass by molar mass here urea urea here x x okay let's go here all come on what is the weight of urea 10 percentage urea mean 10 gram urea in 90 gram water so 10 gram what is the molecular weight of urea i think it's not given no problem we can calculate molecular formula what is urea nh2 co nh2 this is called urea here two nitrogens are there therefore n2 and four hydrogen h4 one carbon one oxygen what is the mass of urea you know top final is 60 two nitrogen one nitrogen 14 so two nitrogen 28 four hydrogen atom 4 one carbon mass is 12 one oxygen mass is 16 right so uh, 0 then uh, 2 so is equal to 60 right 60 gram per mole so the molecular mass of urea 60 equal to what is the weight of x 6 percentage x mean 6 gram in 94 gram so 6 gram x is the molecular mass of x we have to calculate so molecular mass of x is equal to 6 into 60 divided by 10 is equal to 36 gram ok option c is the correct so isotonic solution we can equate by their number of moles next a plant cell shrink when it is kept in you know if a substance is shrinking means the other substance means the solution will be hypertonic very high concentration okay you know hypertonic solution means it is having greater concentration you know if you consider a mango a raw mango if you are putting in nacl solution right if you are keeping in nacl solution you know where is the concentration greater in nacl solution higher the concentration that is called or higher the concentration higher osmotic pressure higher osmotic pressure solution is called the word hypertonic solution so when you keep the substance in a hypertonic solution it will shrink when you keep the substance in hypotonic solution it can swell okay Shrill, uh, shrinking is taking place in hypertonic next osmotic pressure of a solution can be increased by you know dear student osmotic pressure is equal to concentration into rt you know r is a constant temperature can be the for a system it can be constant you know by the main factor affecting is concentration so osmotic pressure you can increase by increasing the concentration of the number of solute particle so what is the answer osmotic pressure you can increase by increasing the number of solute particle you know osmotic pressure is a colligative property so number of particle increases mean the colligative property also increases correct option b is the correct next question dear all for carrying reverse osmosis for desalination of water you know sea water can be purified or you can remove the salt nacl by using reverse osmosis the material used for making semi permeable membrane you know the semi permeable membrane is made up of which one cellulose acetate the semi permeable membrane there is a uh, pure solvent the left side or somewhat it is a pure uh, another side you have solution they are separated by a membrane what is the membrane is called semi permeable membrane it is made up of cellulose acetate 250 ml of sodium carbonate solution contain 2.65 gram of Na2CO3 if 10 ml of the solution is diluted to 500 ml what is the concentration of the diluted acid simple question 250 ml of sodium carbonate so what is the volume of sodium carbonate given 250 ml 
contain 2.65 gram of sodium carbonate so weight of sodium carbonate is given here 2.65 gram okay let me calculate the molarity why we are calculating molarity because they are asking you what is the concentration here we can calculate concentration only because volume and weight is given what is molarity molarity is equal to number of moles by volume in liter of the solution what is number of moles given mass by molar mass into 1000 divided by volume yes or no if volume is given in milliliter we have to multiply by 1000 the numerator to convert into liter right what is weight of solute 2.65 what is the molecular weight of solute not given let's calculate Na2CO3 sodium carbonate what is the mass of 1 sodium 23 so 2 sodium 46 1 carbon mass is 12 1 oxygen mass is 16 3 oxygen mass is 16 into 3 48 right uh, 6 is equal to 1 not 6 right 106 gram into 1000 divided by what is the volume given 250 ml all right so what is the value become uh, is equal to 4 4 into 2.65 so it become right 4 4 into 2.65 4 into 2.6 here by 10.6 divided by 106 is equal to 0 0.1 so molarity of the initial solution we got it 0 0.1 molar 0 0.1 molar now what is the question from this solution what is the concentration of the initial solution 0.1 molarity from this solution 10 ml of this solution is diluted to 500 ml what is the concentration so what is the initial molarity m1 is equal to 0.1 molarity yes or no initial molarity of the system we calculated what is the initial volume they are taking 10 ml of that uh, solution so initial volume they are taking 10 ml we are making into 500 ml so what is the final volume 500 ml question what is the final concentration m2 we have a dilution formula right what is the equation m1 v1 equal to m2 v2 m1 is given 0.1 v1 is given 10 m2 into what is v2 500 0.1 into 10 1 so m2 is equal to 1 divided by 500 0.2 so it will be 0 0.002 right 0 0.002 molar 0 0.002 molar option D so dilution you please don't avoid the beginning part of the chapter like you know the uh, concentration expression parts per million molarity molarity can be expected okay next one the law which is which indicate the relationship between sol solubility of a gas in liquid and pressure is what is that Henry's law Henry's law states that the partial pressure of a gas is directly proportional to its mole fraction right if you apply more pressure on the gas on the solvent you can dissolve more gas in the solvent Henry's law constant for molarity of methyl and benzene is given Henry's constant KH value given 4.27 into 10 to the power 5 millimeter of mercury okay pressure is given you know it's the kh value and normal pressure normal unit millimeter of mercury the mole fraction of methane in benzene at the 298 kelvin under 760 mm hg is the pressure of the gas methane is given here how much 760 millimeter of mercury Question what did it calculate? Mole fraction. Okay, mole fraction of methane we want to calculate. What is the relation? What is the Henry situation, dear student? PA is equal to, sorry, PA is equal to KH into XA. KH into mole fraction of A. Here, what is A system? What is your gas? Methane gas. So, pressure of methane gas equal to KH value into mole fraction of methane gas. So, we need to calculate, I think here, mole fraction of methane, that is equal to pressure divided by KH. What is the pressure given? Pressure given here, 760 divided by KH value, 4.27 into 10 to the power 5. So, definitely 760 by 4, uh, 17, something, 70, 170, yeah, like that is come. But power is there, dear student. At any cost, 10 to the power, come to the numerator, 10 to the power minus 5, 
10 to the power some value will be there it will be negative value that's only one given here option a so henry's constant equation based equation numerical can be expected next you can see there are two graph this is a graph for you know ideal solution non ideal solution positive deviation everything is studied right this is a graph for ideal solution because there is no uh, increase or decrease in pressure mole fraction against vapor pressure you can see the left side means this side this side x2 is equal to mole fraction of a component 2 is equal to they given y value here at this end they given x2 mole fraction is equal to z value what is the x y x z value and finally what is this p token symbol you know if you are plotting a graph here with the mole fraction against vapor pressure if you are getting a graph like this which means it is increasing from left to right at which means if it is a component pressure of one component first component so initially the mole fraction of that component should be zero and it is gradually increases up to what one is or no so you can see here this is a uh, this line is correspond to this line given this line given corresponds to which pressure p2 so second component the value increasing from 0 to 1 0 to 1 so at this end its mole fraction should be 0 at this end it should be 1 and what is the total pressure total pressure you know p1 plus p2 this p2 plus p1 so what is the value here student uh, x value is p1 plus p2 y value should be 0 z value equal to 1 that's option c is the correct not c but that's p1 into p2 right what should be the answer p1 plus p2 yeah option b is the correct answer x, x is the total pressure p1 plus p2 y value which y value this one this y value it should be 0 at the end for the second component because second component pressure is increasing from left to right in 0 to 2 what it is mole fraction is increasing you know mole fraction directly proportional to pressure so 0 y 0 z 1 yeah option b can be which of the following solution is an example of negative deviation acetone and ethanol we studied under positive deviation Carbon tetrachloride chloroform we studied under positive deviation. Acetone, acetone and chloroform negative water with the ethanol is positive, right? Option C is the correct answer. Acetone and chloroform showing negative deviation. Now, study the given graph uh, below. What is the correct statement? Yes, it is easy to understand from the first graph. You know the upper curves, like you can see there now. You know this line represent normal ideal solution. Here you can see that this vapor, the pressures are very greater. Pressure greater for which one? For a positive deviation, right? This is the curve. This is a graph for positive deviation. This is a graph for negative deviation. They are indirectly asking you which pair is matching with that. Yes, student. Nitric acid and water we studied under negative deviation. So this is not possible because the first graph should be a positive deviation example. Water with the ethanol. Water with the ethanol. We studied for positive deviation. Acetone with the benzene. Acetone with the benzene also we studied under positive deviation. So not possible. Now let me tell you everything. Okay, let me start from option number one. Nitric acid and water is negative deviation. Acetone and ethanol is positive deviation. No, we need positive deviation first, then negative deviation. Correct. Then, second pair, water with the alcohol positive deviation, acetone with the benzene also we studied under positive deviation. Acetone with the ethanol positive deviation, acetone and chloroform, yes, this is our pair. Option C is the correct answer. Benzene and chloroform, we studied under negative deviation, acetone and chloroform also negative deviation. No. Okay, only option C is the possible answer. Next, given below a few mixture formed by mixing two components, which of the following binary mixture will have same composition in liquid and vapor phase? What is that? Uh, will have same composition in liquid and vapor phase? They are azeotrope, 
right azeotropes are binary mixture which contain two substance two solution they boil at a constant temperature without changing the composition so they are asking you which of the following binary mixture will have the same composition or i can change the question which will give which all solution can give azeotrope which all solution can give azeotrope you know azeotrope is only given by positive deviation and negative deviation solution now ideal solution will not form azeotrope okay let's go ethanol and chloroform ethanol and chloroform so that we will discuss as an example just to wait nitric acid and water nitric acid and water we study under negative deviation correct benzene and toluene we study for a ideal solution ideal solution ethyl chloride and ethyl bromide we study for ideal solution so definitely we can say third one and fourth one cannot form azeotrope correct because they are ideal solution ideal solution will not form azeotrope azeotrope is formed by only positive and negative deviation solution correct or not okay so what is the answer we wrote ethanol and chloroform ethanol and chloroform that is also a non ideal solution chloroform normal mixtures we are included in negative deviation all right so one and two both can form both are non ideal solution both are non ideal and negative deviation solution it can form azeotrope so one and two is the correct answer okay next one the system that form maximum boiling azeotrope you know maximum boiling azeotrope is formed by negative deviation solution those solutions showing a negative deviation from ramon's law they are showing maximum boiling so they are directly asking you which is an example for negative deviation acetone and chloroform yes acetone and chloroform is a negative deviation ethanol and acetone ethanol and acetone we studied under positive deviation normal hexane normal heptane we studied under we studied under no uh, which one ideal solution carbon sulfide and acetone cs2 carbon disulfide and acetone we studied under positive deviation so only the negative deviation is option a enumerator 1 gram of solute with the molecular mass is dissolved in 50 gram of solvent the elevation in boiling point is given 1 gram solute so weight of solute is given 1 gram molecular mass of solute is given 50 g per mole dissolved in 50 g solvent so weight of solvent is given 50 g and elevation in boiling point delta db is equal to 1 kelvin what is the molar boiling not molar molar boiling constant or elevation in boil uh, uh, the elevation the constant we have to calculate kb kb we want to calculate what is the equation we have delta tb is equal to kb into molality means wb by mb into 1000 divided by wa what is delta tb 1 kelvin what is kb value supposed to calculate what is wb 1 gram what is mb 50 gram 1000 divided by weight of solvent is 50 gram all right <coughs> what it will be dear student so kb value suppose to calculate so kb value is equal to kb value is equal to 50 into 50 divided by right 1000 kb is equal to 50 into 50 divided by 1000 what it comes uh, we get uh, and divided by 1000 25 divided by 10 Right, two point five option C can be the answer. Simple questions like this uh, you can expect it since it is an MCQ examination. Okay, next one. Which of the following qualitative property is associated with the concentration term molarity? Molarity. Molarity we are using the student in osmotic pressure. Is or not? You know, in elevation in boiling point, delta T B is equal to K B into molality. 
Depression in freezing point delta Tf is equal to Kf into molality. Then the lowering of vapor pressure we are uh, using mole fraction. Right? What is lowering of vapor pressure? Relative lowering of vapor pressure P0 A minus Pa by P0 A is equal to mole fraction of solute. Right? Mole fraction. Only molality is coming under osmotic pressure. You know, pi is equal to CRT, where the concentration is what? Molarity. Molarity. Number of moles by volume. Option A is the correct answer. A 500 gram of toothpaste has 0.2 gram fluoride concentration. Fluorine concentration in terms of parts per million ppm. You know, how to calculate parts per million? Parts per million mean number of parts of the component which component you consider by total number of parts of the subsystem into 10 to the power 6 million. 500 gram toothpaste that is the overall system in which 0.2 gram fluoride is there. So what is the number of part of the particular component 0.2. What is the total number of parts 500 million means 10 to the power 6. So it will be 2 lakh right. 500 <coughs> 2000 divided by 5 is equal to what? 400 right uh, option D is the answer so parts per million means number of parts of that component divided by total number of parts into 10 to the power 6 calculate the molarity of a liquid HCl solution whose density is given 1.17 molarity density is simple to calculate here for a system Molarity is equal to the uh, what is the system given? HCl. What is the mass of HCl dear all? One hydrogen mass is 1, chlorine mass is 35.5, that's equal to 36.5 gram per mole, right? Molecular mass of HCl. Molecular uh, molarity is calculated if density given 1 point like density into we can say density into 1000 divided by the molecular mass the molecular mass so molarity is equal to density given 1.17 into 1000 divided by what is the molecular mass of HCl 36.5 okay 36.5 so 1170 1170 divided by 36.5 nearly it has to come uh, 1170 so 3632 32, 42 should not be exceeded. 32 will be done. Okay. Option B, 32.05. Option B can be the answer. Okay. Check it all of you. Density, molarity, equation. The type of intermolecular interaction present in normal hexane and normal octane. Yes, student, hydrocarbons are non polar compounds. You know, normal hexane, normal octane. There is no polar to make a species. Uh, with the make it to make it polarity oxygen nitrogen etc that's not there in a hydrocarbon so normal hexane normal octane both are non polar molecules you know non polar molecules are connected through which bond non polar non polar molecules are connected through which one weak van der Waals forces right weak van der Waals force of attraction dipole dipole interaction is between polar polar molecule hydrogen bond you know and ion dipole means at least one polar molecule is required. Here both are non-polar, that is one or one force. Next, what is the factor delta Tf divided by Kf represent? You know, delta Tf is equal to Kf into molality. So what is molality? That is our delta Tf divided by Kf. Right, delta Tf by Kf represent molality. Very careful, not molarity, molality. Which among the following form nearly ideal solution? Which is an ideal solution, dear all? Chloroform with the benzene. Chloroform with the benzene we studied under negative deviation. Benzene and toluene, yes, this is an ideal solution. Right? And alcohol, water, acetone, that are not non ideal. They are not, they are not ideal solution, not ideal. Benzene and toluene is the example we studied under ideal solution. Right. The concentration of a solution is given mole per liter. The osmotic pressure of the solution at 300 Kelvin is Dear student, concentration how much is given? 0.3 into 10 to the power minus 2 
mole per liter means polarity osmotic pressure supposed to find out temperature is given 300 what is the equation for uh, osmotic pressure pi is equal to crt so pi is equal to concentration 0 0.3 into 10 to the power minus 2 into what is r value universal gas constant in terms of uh, atm and the kelvin 0 0.08218 atm liter kelvin inverse mole inverse right so uh, r value 0 0.0821 into what is temperature 300 all right 0 0.3 into 10 to the power minus 2 300 will be cancelled right so it will be what 0 0.0821 that's osmotic pressure in terms of atm 0 0.0821 0 0.0821 option b is the correct one is all 0 0.3 into 10 to the power minus 2 0 0.003 into 300 will be cancelled right now the isotonic solution have what is an isotonic solution two solution having same osmotic pressure different uh, osmotic pressure no uh, different equimolar different colligative property different osmotic pressure now isotonic solution mean they having same osmotic pressure different colligative property no same clinical property no equimolar concentration yeah osmotic pressures are similar mean osmotic pressure is a colligative property depends on the concentration of solute particle so isotonic solution mean two solution having same osmotic pressure right option d can be the correct answer the following graph show which graph representing this one we study you know liquid solvent here on freezing it become a uh, solid solvent here solution what is that freezing freezing what is that depression in freezing point depression in freezing point of the solvent right okay here all so uh, these are the some important and the uh, expected type of mcq and the most area that were already we covered so in the chapter 2 solution the most importance you have to give for the ideal solution non ideal solution their properties their graphical expression with example and the initial part like the concentration calculated molarity molarity mass percentage volume percentage parts per million etc and what is a Ravold's law what is Henry's law their application and colligative properties the most important one you can expect a theoretical question like uh, reasoning question or mcq question like mcq in the sense like uh, like uh, numerical questions also can be expected so all of you prepare well we can meet with the, again some other chapter some important mcq in the upcoming classes thank you brilliant Katha, your trusted coaching partner for iit je neat science and commerce tuitions with 10 years of excellence in quality training brilliant Katha.